Morning. Look who's not here. Mallory <laughs> ran up the <laughs> stairs as, as, as quickly as one can run while holding a coffee. She was, she was dedicated to being here before I was. That's fine. A little friendly competition in the morning. Get you moving. Get you awake. It's fine. It's fine. Morning, everybody. Hey, it's, uh, it's Thursday. Halfway. Further than halfway through the week the week and the work week so I hope that so far things have things have been going good for everybody Red Dragon Force saying how's it feel to have the extra hair gone it's weird did you yeah, want this? If, yeah, if, if you weren't here Tuesday you'd be like wait what what's going on hold on um yeah I uh ha who who I get a haircut and um in my day to day, I'm 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 used to it. The weirdest thing is the shower. Showering is yeah. so bizarre because, like, and this happens in the bed too, where there's certain things when you have long hair, and people with long hair will will know what I'm talking about. Um, when you're when you have long hair, you you have to do certain things to get it out of your way. So sometimes when I'm when you know when I'm laying in bed, like I'll I'll go to flip over and I'll in, I'll intrinsically like flip my head back, but there's no hair there. Coffee. And I just stopped doing that, like last night. Probably it was the first time like I didn't do it. But um, the the shower is super weird because the same thing kind of happens in the shower. We're like. Um, if you if you rinse off your your head, you kind of like flip your head back to get it out of the way, and I do that. I still do that. Like there's no hair here. It's only this long. But I'll, I'll you know I wash my hair whatever, and then I'll go, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, For what? It's fine. Yeah. There's a lot of like grabbing at nothing. Someone had said phantom hair. It's, it's a good, good good term for it. Yeah, it's, um, it's weird, but, you know, it'll, it'll go away. I'm finally used to seeing myself in the mirror and being like, okay, that's, yeah, that's Stephen George. I remember that guy. When I see you around the house, like, if you have been up here and I've been working for a while, I forget. Really? Mm hmm It'll probably take a week. So it'll probably, probably until, so I got it cut Sunday, so by the time next Sunday comes around. But there were folks here that didn't, that hadn't, that weren't here on Tuesday, mm -hmm. so it's new to them. There's going to be folks tomorrow night mm -hmm. that they're like, what happened? They're all going to turn into Toad. What happened? Anyway, it's fine. Speaking of tomorrow, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say it now. So folks know what they're getting into for tomorrow night. Um, we just finished playing A Way Out. Took two two streams. It was a lot of fun. Um, we enjoyed doing that. We have another game that we want to do. It's going to take a little longer. Um, like a few months. And we want to do it, but it's not quite ready to do yet. Um, there's some stuff that Chaz wants to do for it that's going to take a little bit, so we're not ready to jump into that. So instead, we decided that we're just going to jump straight into It Takes Two. So uh, the developer that made A Way Out, Hazelight, that was their first game. Their second, their second game was It Takes Two, which came out earlier this year. So we're just, we're just going to go straight into it. Um, it kind of reminds me of when we wanted to cover um, Edith Finch. But before we played Eat the Finch, we decided to do um, Unfinished Swan. Unfinished Swan. So then we just got to do one into the other. Um, and I know that the I, I've announced in, in Patreon videos what that longer several month project is. I know that patrons are looking forward to it. 
We're also looking forward to it, but we're, it will not be the next thing. It will not be on Saturday. It won't be, our, or not Saturday. It won't be on Friday. It won't be tomorrow. It'll be just a little bit longer, but that's okay because we're, that's a, it's going to be a cool project and Chaz is working on some stuff that'll make it interesting and dynamic and also more, probably a little more enjoyable for the YouTube audience when they finally get a chance to, to see it. So in the meantime, starting It Takes Two tomorrow. Yeah, I've heard great things about it, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's another game that was designed around two, two people. Like, you have to play it um, cooperatively, so should be fun. Anyway, let me read some alerts here. We got 20 months from uh, Harumi Kindle, 8 months from Link Nightblade. 300 from a person, dude, one, who says, After a lot of stress and some delays, I finally was able to close on my first house this week. There's a lot I'm looking forward to, but one of the biggest things is having a yard again with all kinds of critters for my cat to watch. That's awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's really exciting. Yeah. Having having a place for your your cat to be visually stimulated is, is, is nice. One of the things we haven't done... Um, in a while is uh, clean out the bird feeder and put the bird feeder there. Yeah, I gotta bleach it because there was a, during migration season. Yeah, there was a bird disease or something. The, uh, mm -hmm. We haven't gotten back around to that. Either way, congrats again, because that's, that's, that's a big thing. That's a really big thing. And also closing, I know, um, I mean, I don't know personally, but I've heard from other folks can be stressful. Uh, 18 months from Rumblefish90, 31 months from Angemin85, 4 months from Alien Whale. We got 12 months from Risen1247. Congrats on the one. Thanks for sticking around that long. 8 months from Nomi Bookworm1984, 3 to bits from Squid. Who says, Can I get some good vibes? I'm planning to meet up with a friend from high school today for lunch, and I'm very anxious since I haven't seen him in years. Yeah! Yeah, good vibes. I, um,. I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> like, well, I, okay, so I guess it depends what you consider a friend from high school, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like, like last week's lunch bunch, Austin was there, right? Yeah. Austin is technically a friend from high school, but that would, be, excuse me, that would be... It, it's someone you haven't seen in years. Yeah. 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 I, I, if I put myself into Squid's position, I'm, like, thinking about... You know, oh, I'm going to meet up with a classmate that I literally haven't seen since then. Mm -hmm. Then I the, immediately, I yeah, I, I, I totally understand. I'm like, yeah, that would be that would be strange. So I, I hope things go well. I hope uh, I hope you're able to both catch up and it's a good experience. It's a reminder that I didn't do my 10 year reunion. Uh, you're 15 is next year. Yeah. I was talking to Carly yesterday. And uh, I was telling her how my 15 is this year. Yeah. I was telling her where it was. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know where it is in Appleton. Yep. And I was like, I don't think it'll hold us all. Like, it's not a very big spot, but like only 10 people have RSVP'd. <laughs> Out of 250. Yeah. And not all 250 got invites? Thinking I don't know. Trying to think percentage-wise who went to my 10-year. 20? 20%. 20% of the class went to the 10-year. Which is... Uh, I don't know. if Is that good? Is that a good turnout? Is 20% a good turnout? Is that a bad turnout? I don't know. My class was also really small, so... Yeah. Carly said she went to her five and had a good time and then didn't go to her ten. I'm the one that set up the five. Yeah. And then when the ten was um, when the ten was coming up, everyone was like, you're going to do it, right? And I was like, no. Francis, I don't think my high school class can contact me. And that's okay. I, I have, um, and it, I think a lot of people probably feel how I feel about this. 
I don't really have any contact much with my high school classmates. Um, I'm I'm friends with them on Facebook, but like I have not spoken to them in like a long time. And it's not out of like I don't dislike any of them. I just don't I don't know them. Like so much mm -hmm. has changed since high school for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um I can't imagine that we have anything in common. You know? Like there's a handful of people I would love to see because I moved away that I don't get to see. Mhm. Uh -huh. But none of them are going to the reunion, so Yeah. And Chase says that's the point of reunions to see what everyone's up to. Yeah. And and I think I think if you approach it from that perspective that's pretty that's fair. Well, at my 10 year when it was time for the 10 year, I was just I was busy, and I hate to I hate to frame it in the perspective of like I just didn't care. I just I just didn't care. I, I like, and I, I feel a little differently now. So I guess I was just in a, a different headspace, and I was busy. I was busier five years ago. Yeah. Like I was I was actually really busy. Um, so I, I I think I would I would approach it differently now. If, if my 15 years is coming up next year. Would I actually plan and do something for it? I mean, maybe. It's not maybe. your job to plan it, though. Well. You weren't class president. Well, I still claim. I, 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 I'm the one that planned all of the events. My class president didn't do ours either, so. Yeah. And, like, our class president didn't do things because I did them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, like, he was, he was a good dude. Mm -hmm. It's just that I historically had planned everything, so that's why I ended up doing the stuff out of school, too, so. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll contact people and be like, you all, you all want to do this? And if I'm in charge of it, I'll just be like, just meet at the Golden Corral. I, I don't know. We'll get the back room. Is you only need to, you only need to meet up with folks for like, like an hour and a half anyway. That's fine. Anyway, uh, 300 bits from Satsy. Who says, so yesterday was amazing for thunderstorms. It was right overhead for a while. It went on for ages. Cooled everything down. Shame I couldn't get groceries. Too risky. I mean, knowing the risks is important. But I'm glad that it cooled everything down. We've, uh, we actually had some storms come... Something very rare happened on Tuesday night. Um, on Tuesday night... I was going to talk about last night at going through Wisconsin. But yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to mention, um, on Tuesday night, we'd, we'd finished all of our work, and, and Mal and I decided we were going to play a little Pokemon Unite. Mal plays in her studio, and I play in the living room, because neither of us can play handheld. I've learned that. The whole thing where I was having issues yeah. with my nerves and stuff playing on the phone with Slate Aspire, I can't play handheld, because it's the same stupid thing. So I have to, I can't play the Switch handheld anymore. It's not. It's no longer a handheld system to me. It's it's a home console. So um, I was playing in the in the living room, and Mal and I were, uh, we were we were playing together. So we we're like calling out stuff to each other, and we had three seconds left in a match that we were like, we won that match, and the power flashed because there were there it was a little stormy outside, so all the lights in the house went off. Then they came back on. And the switch stays on because it goes to battery, but of course the Wi-Fi died because the, the router died. died and the TV died. So everything came back on, and my my Venusaur is just running in place. And it comes up, and it's like <laughs> retrying, and it's just Venusaur running in place forever. And I was like, okay. So it took like several minutes, and then finally it went back to the main menu, and I just assumed that I was like, well, I guess that's gonna count against us or whatever. Yeah. And no, it actually, it counted it, because when I went to my battle record, it was there. We did win the match, Mal was MVP, and it, it, it didn't count against us. I thought we were gonna like lose the little fair play points for disconnecting early or something. It was fine. Sorry, what was your story about Wisconsin? Well, they had a big straight line windstorm Coffee. come through yesterday. Like, it started up in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and it looks like, 
like it goes and it kind of curls on the ends, like on the radar. So it kind of started up by Carly and went down towards my dad. And on the radar, it spun right over Milwaukee and it looked like a mini hurricane going through. Oh. And I haven't heard from anyone except Carly yet, but yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that lilac oligoshi. Is that Derrico? Yeah, that's the word. I just don't know how to pronounce it. Derrico or Derricho? I don't know. I've never seen that uh, but town name before. Carly said they didn't really have anything where she's at. Derrico? Derrico? Derecho? Dare H-O? Dear Echo? Dare, okay, there's, there's like five different pronunciations. We'll just say that we all can read the word and we'll just have to leave it at that. Carly said Kyle's family has a cabin in northern Wisconsin somewhere. Mm -hmm. And she said that they got some damage there, but they don't think it was major. Mm. And uh, I messaged my dad and I was like, you guys get any damage? Because there were at least two tornadoes on the radar. Yeah. Not too far, but definitely wouldn't have survived to get all the way to where they live. But Storms are scary. Yeah. Storms are really scary. Emmy redeemed points. I said, I still don't know what these do. They make your, they, they make, um, you know, text on screen different colors, and then otherwise they make the points go up. There is no deeper meaning. It does not, it does not cause any, any other, any other things to occur. We got 14 months from Skanork. Six months from Aspiring Rider 95. 35 months from Perendry. 22 months from Shea. 10 months from Max T152, 33 months from Sapphire Becca, 24 months, hey, that's two years, from Bored Turtle, congrats. Uh, three months from King Explosion Murder 97. That's, a, that's a, quite a name. Three to bits from Humbology says, just got here after watching the women's all around. Really exciting, even without Simone Biles. Suni Lee's amazing. Carly and I were talking about her last night and about gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a real shame that um, Simone couldn't continue. But, but totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there were some folks online um, that were criticizing the decision of dropping out, and they had used the the um, comparison to Jordan. They're like, Jordan wouldn't have dropped out, and then there was a bunch of people that were like, you know Jordan like left the sport for like a year because of the, <laughs> the immense amount of mental pressure on him. It's like, that did happen. It's, I think, so here's my, here's my perspective on the whole thing. Like, I think it would be... Yeah, she got the twisties. It's like gymnastic vertigo while she was in the air. Yeah. And with how powerful she can, like, jump and Yeah, you could, like, you yeah. can, like, die. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with the... The vertigo feeling. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, I, I think the, the thing for me is, like, I can't imagine being the best at something, like the best, mm -hmm. like the best. It, people say like, oh, he's the best at, no, like the actual, the best of the thing, like the best thing for anyone. Like Phelps or. And then you everyone, yeah. everyone in the world always being like, you're the best. You're the greatest there's ever been. And like dealing with that forever. Yeah. That just it like, seems like a lot. The people who are doing, I don't know who's doing all the announcements for the Olympics, but. It was something else Carly and I talked about, how they're they're like, oh, she's not on top of her game. Like, she's not doing her greatest. But she still was, like, coming out top in every event. And they yeah. were saying that, like, all in the same breath. And it was, like, criticizing, but, like, look how gif gifted she is at this. And it was... I yeah. can understand everything. Yeah. I, it, it, I, I'm sure that it's very... I mean, it would be difficult for anyone, but, like... If, if you are the best at a thing and people are constantly like, you're the best, you're the, and you, you have all of that pressure on you, mm -hmm. that's good, that, that's not, that's not great long term, so, yeah, yeah, anyway, I wish her well. Yeah. Uh, Fror Wolf gifted five milk bombs to Bunny Hill 87, Mama Zelda, Phonetic Fan 21, Poke Mario 64, and Smart Guy 93. Four Wolf, thank you. Thank you for contributing to everyone's calcium collection this morning. Uh, let's see, we got 34 months from DC20 Will Save. 
16 months from Pete Cow. Uh, 24 months, that's two years, from Elio Hyena. Congrats on that. Uh, 31 months from Zach Chilman. 28 months from Sudabite. Uh, 300 bits from Colin, who says, I just saw this on Twitter. New Pokemon Snap is getting a free content update, adding three new areas and over 20 new Pokemon. Wow. Dang. Well, that's spectacular. New Pokemon Snap is going to continue to be our... our um, Backup game? Yeah, it's going to... Like, if we need a week off, you know, to just... Before we jump into... We actually considered doing that for this week, too. But I was like, no, I, I'm, I, I don't need to take... I can jump into a, a thing. Um, the new Pokemon Snap is, is kind of our game. And uh, it's, it's fun. It's, and I've learned a little bit... A little bit more about... Some of the other Pokemon? Because of Pokemon Unite, I learned a few few more names. Like, uh, Cramorant mm -hmm. is Pelican Man. I just scream Pelican Man, though. It's not actually based off a of Pelican. What? It's based off a of Cormorant. <laughs> They're a seabird. Another rabbit. seabird. <laughs> They're Soccer Rabbit? Everybody there's, smiles at crab. There's Pelican Man. There's Lasagna Crab. Um, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Zara Aura is Kadabra. Sorry. Because in the game, everything zoomed out a little bit, and that's what Zara Aura looks like from above. Kadabra. So every time I see one coming, I go, Oh, God, a Kadabra. 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 It's not Kadabra. A cadaver pretending to be a peak accurate. With a cat face. Yeah, like it's just I, I Hot see that thing. With Steven. I see that thing and I've learned, like, if 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 a Venusaur and a cadaver meet in a forest, the Venusaur's not leaving. <laughs> um I've I've enjoyed playing Venusaur, but there's certain characters, if I'm alone in a lane and I see one coming, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Like the 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 red bird, firebird, talonflame. Talonflame. If I'm if I'm in the lane and I see a talonflame, I'm like, oh no, oh no. I feel when I see Snorlax. Snorlax doesn't worry me. Snorlax, Snorlax doesn't worry me. I'm not worried about Snorlax. That's, Snorlax that's isn't because Snorlax isn't gonna. You play Venusaur, who's ranged, and if you're close enough to Snorlax, he sits on you and stuns you, and you can't get away. Yeah, I. Snorlax can't kill me fast enough to kill me, is my takeaway. I can eject button away from a Snorlax. Yeah, one. But if you if you have if you have a full thing to run, a Kadabra can start attacking you. You can eject button away, and with enough time, the Kadabra will catch you. Sorry, the Zara Aura. Sorry, I've I've a lot of um I have a lot of thoughts about about this you can't game. can't kill me fast enough to kill me. <laughs> anyway. We got 30 months from Lunar Pearl. Uh, let's combine these. 600 bits from Shy, who says, There's a kid I used to hang out with in high school. Then in high school I realized uh, I'd likely be into video games for life. And he went, You still play video games? Uh, suffice to say, we didn't hang out anymore. That's fair. I... Uh, I so in high school, uh, I mean, I, I was also big into video games, but, um, you know, I filmed uh, a lot of stuff. I took, I, well, in high school, I took a lot of photos. Um, and I remember we all met up. It wasn't like a reunion thing, but like a year out of high school, we, we did a get together. Um, I don't know if it was on the vlog or not. A year out of high school? No. But I feel like it was on the vlog, so maybe it was two years out of high school. That would have been longer. What? Wouldn't it have been after that? Three know. years? Anyway, at some point, before a five-year reunion, I remember we got a bunch of people together. I set it up. Mao was there. And we talked to everybody. Um, and we, we had most people there. Like, mm -hmm. we, we had, a, like, most of the class, like, yeah. came back for this thing. And um, I had talked about how I had started doing, like, this vlog thing. So it had to have been after the vlog. 
Yeah, I guess so. I guess it was. I don't think the vlog could have been very old, maybe. I don't remember. It's been, it, it seems like a long time ago. Anyway, that would probably be weird for them now. Be yeah. like, you know, is that thing that I, that I started? Okay. Well, now I've been doing it like longer than anyone in the world, so there's that. Also, I still play the video games. Actually, that's part of the part of my job description. Also, I play video games. So that would be strange. I'm trying to think what they do. I don't keep up with their lives. I think I think Zess has man says I'm going to boat. I th ironically, I think one of them sells boats. <laughs> Next reunion. You still like to sing Faith by George Michael? I do, actually. <laughs> well, I guess it would be nice. Three months from Chris and 164. 300 bits from Pickletron says, uh, so this already happened to me today, but how, how, uh, but how after do you get jump scared by the toaster? Often. Oh, how often do you get jump scared by the toaster? Uh, not at all. But that's just me. I don't, I don't get... You don't startle easy. I don't startle, really. Um, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I know that that there will be multiple people that are like, but what about the the video where Alex is in the closet? It's like a very special exception. Um, I get startled by things like holding the fire alarm that's dying and beeping occasionally and knowing it's going to beep because I've been counting the timing and still getting startled by it. Yeah, I, I don't... <laughs> Watching the countdown timer on dinner and I'm like, still startled by the oven beeping at me. Yeah, I, uh, I... It's very rare for me to... You know, even, it's, even if there's, like, loud crashes or explosions, like, anything that happens just out of the ordinary, that doesn't even usually make me jump. It just happens and I'll, I'll go, huh, what was that? I don't know why. <laughs> like what? the air conditioner just turned on and I sort of had a, oh, moment when it went on. My brain did not process that it came on. Didn't even do it. Yeah, what, yeah creepers, creepers startled me a lot. I was, I also, I think, I think maybe when I was doing the Minecraft LP, I very purposely put myself on edge. Maybe it's just a subconscious setting in my brain that I can turn on when I know that it's better for entertainment. Um, but I do remember being startled badly by creepers. Like, it, and it's so strange now because thinking back in my life, I'm like, creepers were the worst part. Creepers were the things that like made me jump the most in like my entire life. But if you get really into a game, it could, it can, that, that could affect you. That could affect you. Anyway, 300 bits from Summer Century says, Morning, my sister and I just finished a jigsaw puzzle and two of the pieces were missing. Aww. Also tomorrow I'm moving out of my parents' house for the third time in my life, so some good vibes would be appreciated. Good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Sorry about the missing puzzle pieces. You could, you could, can you make your own puzzle pieces? Could you, like, take... Could you finish the puzzle, take some Sculpey, shove it in there, chop off the excess, harden it, and then paint it? I mean, I suppose you could. That'd be kind of neat. You could trace it onto a thin piece of cardboard and cut it out and paint it. Yeah. Yeah, you could... Certainly be unique. You'd also just leave a hole and just and be like... And sometimes, depending on how old the puzzle is, and if it was brand new or not, you can contact the manufacturer. Sometimes they even have, like, a printout that comes with the puzzle where you can color in the piece that's missing. That's neat. Crescent Guy says, I want puzzles of mouse work. There are some available. If there's one that you want that is not available, send me a message. They... It's a relatively new product. It is, and they require a different file type size. So I have to make it, which isn't a problem if you want one, in, like, specifically. But to do all 103, well, less because some of them have it already, 
that takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, it started just a few months ago. Yeah. yeah, if you've ever wanted a puzzle of Mal's work, if that's your specific uh, niche, then it's available. It's just, if it's not from the past few months worth of, yeah. of work, then just send Mal a tweet and be like, hey, could you make a puzzle of this painting and Mal will work on it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually got one. Yeah, we and got I just the Breath of the Wild one. Together, yeah. I, well, I, I, there's two Breath of the Wild ones now. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. The first one, Dueling Peaks. We yes. have a puzzle of Dueling Peaks. They do take so. a long time to ship, but they're obviously you know custom printed and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're ordering it for someone for like their birthday or something, give yourself extra a time. Month plus. Yeah. Yeah. Give it give it like a month plus because it. When we ordered it, it took a long time to arrive, but it's cool. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So, yeah, puzzle of my Coliseum painting. <laughs> on it, on fire. What, what did we call it? Gygus wins. Gygus wins. <laughs> that's a good one. Hmm. <laughs> Emmy wants a puzzle of duck neck. <laughs> that would be a very difficult puzzle to put together because most of the pieces would be white. Yep. Are they kid friendly, the puzzles? Um, some of, you can get them in different sizes. We got the thousand? thousand piece one, the biggest one, and they're tiny, but the bigger ones, the bigger piece ones are probably bigger. I mean, that statement is objectively true. How big, I don't know, but if you 30 say- 30 is the- The bigger piece ones are probably bigger. 30 it's is probably. the smallest but biggest piece ones, but I don't know how big the pieces are on that. But on the, Do you know the dimensions? Not offhand, but it says on the Is website. Is it like the size of the other one? or are they, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, if you have um, 30 pieces, 6 by... I think that's what about probably what Probably like 6... six uh, it could be 6 by 5? Uh, Renee says, and it looks like they come in a tin. Yeah. Yeah, they come in a tin. I could show one. Go get it. I can... Hold on, let me finish this. <laughs> Let me just show you what it looks like, since you're I interested. didn't announce it when I did it, because Breath of the Wild was the first, uh, Dueling Peaks was the first one I did. And I just uploaded it and ordered myself one to test it, because it's a huge file, and I wanted to make sure it looked okay. And it took a month to arrive, but in that time, someone else on Instagram ordered one and put it together and then tagged me on Instagram, and I was like, okay, well, it looks good, so... I don't have to put mine together anytime soon. <laughs> but I got to see theirs, and they ordered the same size as I did, so. The pe that's inside of a bag. So this is the tin. So it comes in a nice tin with the art on the front. I do wish they had information, though. Like, it doesn't have my name or anything else it just says red bubble on it and these are the pieces there you go it's a really um honestly it's the presentation of it's really nice just because it could have very easily come in a uh, cardboard box yeah, like a generic red bubble cardboard box. And the fact that it comes in a really nice tin with the art on the top is actually more than I was expecting. So, yeah. I should put it together. Oh. Oh, hey, right here. Um, piece count, 1,000. Piece size, small. Age grade, adult. You can also get it in 500 pieces. Puzzle size, large. Ages 9 and up. 252 pieces, puzzle size medium, ages 8 and up, 110 pieces, puzzle size small, age grade 6 plus, and then you can get a 30 piece puzzle, large pieces, for ages 4 and up. So there you go. You can have this back. Thank you. So yes, there is a there is a 30 piece puzzle and it's safe for ages four and up. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's neat. And uh, that one of our 
one of our friends sisters wanted a likes doing puzzles likes doing puzzles and um was in had watched or just recently watched or was watching through the fallout 4 lp mm -hmm. and wanted a puzzle of mal's fallout 4 piece so that's also one of them that's available yeah. because of that uh let's see we got i think um, they ordered two for their sister as a birthday gift oh yeah mm -hmm. what was the other one I don't remember offhand, but I remember that one. The other one was already done, I think. I didn't have to do that one. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. We got uh, 100 bits from Switch Kid 2001 uh, and 19 months from Ghosty Toasty 3. And uh, actually, we got, I'm just going to combine these 500 bits from Switch Kid who says, Do you plan on going to any conventions once it's safe? I mean,. It'll, I, my answer is it'll be a while. Yeah. That's how that's how I feel, is it'll be a while. Because, like, for instance, PAX West is happening. I'm not going PAX West. <laughs> and, like, even a year from now, I'm like... Yeah. Do I think I'm I'm ever going to a convention again? I, I Yeah, I think at some point I will. But I just don't... There, I have too many other things to do, and I still feel really iffy about the whole thing, so it'll be a while. And yeah, like Emmy points out, Con Plague was a thing before the pandemic, so like people were already getting sick. So like, I know you could get sick at a convention. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. It it'll be it'll be a, it'll probably be a while. Yeah. Admittedly, it'll it'll um it'll probably it'll probably be a little bit. But I'd like to at some point. I don't know when that'll be, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens. I don't. One one thing that helps a little bit is that I don't spend a whole lot of time at the like the convention on the floor. On yeah, on the well, in yeah. You can't you can't say that. You gotta. <laughs> on the convent in the convention hall. Yeah, that's that's the words. It's been so long since I've been I, there. It, it, well, what you said isn't incorrect. It's just some people are gonna be like, does Steven go to the conventions and then just, just lay, lay on, on the, the ground? Floor. Like, <laughs> it's not exactly what I meant. Um, yeah, for the past few conventions that we went to, I, I, there was a, few, quite, there was a few I never even went into the the hall. Yeah. To be honest, um, and like if you're if you're not on the hall, like you, there's been a few conventions I, I didn't get sick. Mm -hmm. But there's been plenty I did, you know, so it's like, that's the one thing where I, I, I get a little, I get a little scared about the whole thing, because I'm like, oh, oh, and it, it, you know, being vaccinated, like, I don't, I, I don't think I would die, but I, I don't want to get sick, Yeah. you know, so, of course, that's just a reason to, to not go to conventions in the first place, but oh, I don't want to get sick, really. Uh, Yami Florence gifted a sub to Missing No Leader. We've got 32 months from the Great Ass Fairy. 35 months from Dishnet 34. So many folks are closing in on three years. It's getting real close. Real, real close. Because <laughs> the guy says, I've gone to a con where there was an entire nap hour in one of the main rooms, so Mel's not wrong. It's really not a bad idea for a room. After one of the meetups, well, there at PAX they used to have like a handheld gaming area with bean bags, and you could just chill. Yeah. But after one of the meetups at PAX East, I was super cold, so we went into the the media room. There was some ballroom that they had put aside for something like that, and. I had been wearing very thin shoes, and it was very cold out, and I had to sit there and like warm my feet because they were. <laughs> Almost transparent. They were so cold. Yeah, that was well. That was just the one time. Yeah. We learned. We learned not to stay out so long, and you learned not to wear those shoes. Yeah. A lot of things were learned. <laughs> yeah, frostbite bad. Yeah, it might have been a mild frostbite. Frost nip. Frost nip. What's the other one that goes with it? Hypothermia. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. Be, be, stay warm. Yeah. 
I say, in July. You say as we have like a heat wave today with 110 heat index. We're not eating outside for lunch punch. Not today. We'll die. Um, yeah, don't, don't go outside. Oh. Brand, and if you use promo code heat... Yeah, thankfully that's, that's over. Morning, Tom. When I got my mild frostbite that year, mm -hmm. my feet hurt for... Oh, a long like a time. a year. I still yeah. had problems. Oh, it was bad. Take care of yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was not good. Yeah. My toes would go numb for like a year randomly. Do you remember... It oh, was, God. It was real bad. I'm trying to remember what the occasion was. Was it, was it from Japan? There was a time where... I lost all the feeling in my pinky toe. You remember? Yeah, we were in Japan. Was then. it Japan? Mm -hmm. Where I had walked so much that my pinky toe went numb and I didn't regain feeling in it at all until like five or six months later. Yeah. It was crazy. Is first Japan trip? Was it first I thought or it was second? second? It might have been second. I don't remember. I'm sure it's on. It's it's talked about on the vlog or whatever. But yeah, um, nerves take a long time to heal, like a long, long time. And if you if you do something to screw them up, it just takes an absolutely astounding amount of time to get them to go back to normal. And um, it took a long time. <sighs> yeah, it 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 sucked. I heard about that, Tom. Yeah, I'm Tom, so sorry. God, I. I I saw I saw the tweet about that, and my first thought was, "Oh God, poor Tom." And then the second thought I had was, "We'll be right back." <laughs> when <laughs> you fell down <laughs> the stairs. <laughs> Tom, I'm, I'm assuming that you you weren't actively vlogging your fall. Um, <laughs> probably not. Most people are, most people are not. Yeah, as Brandon points out, we can be stair buddies now. Uh, it is, I mean, I don't know the, the conditions in which your, your fall occurred, but um, the fall for me made me um, very much like acutely aware of my step positions, like knowing where my feet was on the stairs from now on, always holding the guardrail. Like I'm, I'm terrified. The handrail? Yeah, <laughs> rail, whatever. I was carrying manatee's food and water and misjudged where the step oh. was. Did you have a hand on the handrail? No, carrying food and water. Well, it might, what if it's one of those food and No, manatee's big. Yeah. I was like, they put the food and the water in the same thing. But I I'm mean, like, that's for a cat. they for bigger dogs, but... Well, yeah, it's probably two-handed. Yeah, I, um... Yeah. I'm just... It really, it really, it, it really scared me when, after I fell, um... I mean, for one, I was worried I was going to hurt myself, and then the other one is I, I was worried I was going to break the camera. So uh, I'm, from now on, I, I, I'm, I'm handrail. You, in the rare event, because there have been some times um, where I've had to hold two things, when I go down the stairs, I'm, I'm, I, I take it slow, and I think about where my feet are on the step, and like every, it's just a whole thing. It just... Falling down the stairs sucks. <laughs> Manatee was not sympathetic. He thought I was playing. It's fine. It's fine. You 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 know you just immediately turn it into playtime. You're like, ah, oh, it's what I do sometimes, but just fall down the stairs for your personal amusement. Anyway, we got three months from uh, Mini or one. And 300 bits from Danny X6 who says, Vibes request, opening night for the show I'm in is tomorrow, and Tech Week is kicking my butt. Oh. Oof. Good vibes. Good vibes. I hope, uh, I hope your show goes well, Danny. I know that you've been looking forward to that. Good vibes. Man. Did I ever tell you about the time I tripped in my classroom? In, like, one of my worst-behaved classes? 
I'm sure that they um... they were very sympathetic. Oh I, really? I, okay, good. I got hurt, and they were like, <laughs> "Mr. George, are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I just need to sit." <laughs> I was carrying that step ladder, the one we have here now. Yeah. And I got my feet tangled up in it, and I went down on top of it. I was very bruised. Yeah, that doesn't sound yeah. good. I don't like. I don't like that. Oh, Shay says, the vlog you talk about your numb pinky toe was recorded precisely two years ago to the day. Okay, so, yeah, it's the second Japan trip. Morning, hmm. Dan. Morning, Dan. We got, all, we got all sorts of folks here this morning. We had a storm go through last night, and I was wondering if it woke Dan and Lindsay up over where they live. Oh, man, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna tell this story because this story is, uh, this is great and I've never heard of this happening before um, the other day uh, Dan and Lindsay lost internet and their internet just went out and that's obviously bad I mean that's bad for for Dan because you know Dan uploads stuff and does work for us but he can still work yeah but Lindsay who works from home and has to be connected to the internet like can't work at all so it's actually really bad for Lindsay um, and they're like oh, wait, our internet's not working something's weird so they call the ISP ISP comes out, and uh, they open up the, the box on the outside of the, the house. box, and there's a wasp nest this big. I don't think it was quite that big. It was pretty big. I'd say it was more fist sized. They came out the same day Brandon asked. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Is it's our, it's our, a story. Is our ISP a co-op? No, that's our electricity. Anyway, it's it you listen when you tell anyway. when you tell a story, <laughs> you don't take the wind out of someone's sails when they're telling a story. The details are not that important. The box isn't that big though. The box is bigger. The box is bigger than this. <sighs> yeah, she, I, the fish was this big. It's about telling it. Listen, that has nothing to do with anything. <sighs> anyway, there was a wasp nest in the box. My dad would be so mad. <laughs> Um, yeah, there was a wasp nest in the box, and that is why, that is why they did not have in it. See, now the story doesn't even flow! Uh. They couldn't fix it yesterday, Lindsay said. They had to come back today with a special wasp spray, because whatever normally people would use on that would be like oily and bad for the equipment inside. And that that's something I didn't know. Yeah. Cuz like if I would have seen wasp nest I would have been like wasp well I I wouldn't have sprayed a wasp nest. Maybe. Well, I guess it depends. Were there wasps inside? Yeah, there was like 3 of them on there. Might sprayed a wasp nest. Did Chess share it? I don't know if he did. Does he have the picture? Lindsay posted a picture. But there's also bugs on it, so well there's wasps on it. It's not, you know, it's not a close-up of, yeah. like, their faces. Yeah. I don't know. He can share it if he wants. Uh, we have uh, 29 months from Spinatrap. Spinatrap, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't love wasps, but I can I can deal with them. Yeah, we, every so often I'll walk around the house and double-check we don't have any starting their nests. And we've seen a few of them start where they're only, like, a couple of the little paper wasp cells. Mm-hmm. And we knock them down. Chess is now. Nah. Uh, 300 bits from Satsu says, uh, We have had a bee's nest in a birdhouse behind my house this spring. Haven't seen them for a while. I hope they're okay. So the bees are chilling in the birdhouse. Can the, can the birds and the bees coexist? I probably could have worded <laughs> that differently. Let me try. Can the bees and the birds coexist? I don't think so. I just I wasn't sure like if the you know, if the if the bees are in the house, if the birds will be like, Well, hello, good chap. We're just gonna share this this condominium. Didn't know that. Anyway. <laughs> I hope the bees are okay. Bees are fine. Yeah, bees are fine. Bees are fine. I kill wasps. Uh, I, I I make a game of it because we have an electric racket, 
and I go out there and I swat them. It's fun. We get these nasty wasps. They're like red or... There's a bunch of different types of... Yeah, uh, here there's a lot of types. Stinging critters. Um, Man, we had carpenter bees at our last place in that wood post out back. That was interesting to watch them because they're huge mm -hmm. and they're not super aggressive. They just kind of are huge and get in your face. And we also had some sort of ground bee that was, they, like they're they solitary. They don't have a hive mm -hmm. and they go underground and lay their eggs and then leave. And that was interesting because you could see where they would dig and it was like quite a big spot. <laughs> I mean, so the Merle Beach sounds scary. It's not. It's really not. I, I never saw scary. a roach till I came down here. Well, you don't see too many. Of no, them. we don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. That there's wildlife everywhere, and there's you know. There's wildlife here, and like it's not really scary. Just like don't mess with it and it is fine it's fine there's more crazy stuff in florida oh yeah florida's like i mean we were just there and i felt i haven't been to florida in a while but i really felt like there was a lot more scary wildlife when we were there i mean in <laughs> fairness we actually have most of the same critters the only difference is that florida also has like pythons <laughs> and Florida probably has more gators yeah we saw multiple gators while we were there like yeah. we went out for a walk and saw multiple alligators so like there's probably some truth to that we don't see alligators here often no maybe a few times a year you'll see one just in your day-to-day -day. yeah I mean, if you're in certain areas, you see them more often. Like, if you go to the state park, they're always over there. Yeah. There was one the other day um, in the ocean at Surfside. Like a six foot, maybe? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. had come out from the marsh. But, like, you know, my dad's house is in central Florida, and there were, there were gators. <laughs> Dan points out, there is a reason why Florida has gators as their team. Yeah. It's fair. And there I don't were know. way, way more lizards down there. Like the anoles. They were everywhere. We had the same amount. Also, if you're, using, if you're using ball teams to figure out what you have a lot of, I mean, that works in some cases. But if that were completely true, I mean, we wouldn't be able to, like, get to Walmart without fighting off the Gamecocks. And we... I, I very, very rarely have to fight a, uh, a rooster off to get to the grocery store. It doesn't happen very often. I was going to say, up by where our post office used to be, there's a housing development with a bunch of big ponds. Mm -hmm. And there's a 15-foot gator that lives in one of them. Sorry, Jesper. Seattle was overrun with mud crabs. <laughs> Mouse doesn't manage to catch a lizard. I, we have one that's been living on the corner of our house, and I've been trying to catch him all summer. <sighs> the Carolinas have a lot of pan We do have panthers. Not in this area. We live at the beach. There's, a, have, lot of, there's a lot of we things. We have coyotes and foxes here. Yeah, we have bears. Mm -hmm. There was actually... There was just a, it was a news article. Yeah. It was a news article. It was like someone saw a, a bear come out by the road and they, t they snapped a photo and then the news reported on it. And I'm like, it's a bear. They live in the woods. We have bears. I was like, why is this news? It's just, you know. It's a it's a it's a sort of reminder that uh, Myrtle Beach is a place where theoretically a bear and an alligator could fight, and that's just exciting to me. We had 14 months at tier three platinum toast from I know how to spell calm. Thank you for that. Actually, it's I know how to spell clam. <laughs> I 
I reread it. I reread it. <laughs> and we and we have three bits. Mr. Game Boy says accurate story is is better story when talking real life IMO. I have I have strong opinions about storytelling. And there is a difference there's differences in, in telling stories like real li mm -hmm. Coffee. Even when telling a story that is based in reality from real life, it depends on what you're talking about. Like if you're if you're trying to recount to a police officer what occurred at a traffic light, then yeah, you're going for accuracy. <laughs> But if you're if you're trying to tell an interesting story, then certain details don't always have to be exactly as they occurred if it makes the story better. My father is a storyteller. I grew up and I sat at the dinner table and watched guests come over um, and my dad would tell stories you know of, of his life of, of all this stuff and I got to hear these stories over and over and over and uh, for one I learned I learned how to tell a story because my dad is an extremely good storyteller um, I learned about the ebb and flow of a story and like when to push on things and when to you know like how to do it and then also uh, I, I learned that he sorry emmy said something funny <laughs> i learned that he absolutely embellished parts of it because the stories would change a little bit you know i'd hear him tell a story and then i'd hear him retell a story and then things would get added or subtracted and in fairness like that that's a little bit about like how human memory works because you do um like as time goes on you forget details and things you you can't remember quite as well as you did uh but I just, I don't know, That's that, that's that been my experience like growing up. Um, was always getting a chance to see really good storytelling. And like my mom could tell stories good too, but like it, even as a young kid, I, I was very aware that like dad was really good at telling stories. So. So to this day, if I'm telling a story the, the specific detail, whether, God help me, Lord, whether the wasp nest was this big or this big, it does not matter. I'm going to lose sleep over that. But that, everything is, different things are important to different people. The coffee beat tea? Did they do it? They it did, did it. Did. And now, the reckoning. As a reminder, uh, today's the last date for uh, Lemonade. So if you, uh, you know, if you like Lemonade and you're like, could we get it to four digits? You could try. <laughs> you could try. But coffee's ahead right now. So the coffee people are going to be like, okay. Coffee people, use your points on the lemonade and we'll keep doing coffee. <laughs> anyway. Someone wanted me to roll beans. Well, and how appropriate to roll beans? Coffee. When coffee's ahead. Yeah. Because that's really what it's about. Thank you. Patreon.com slash Stephen George Malmix. There was a link, but it went by super fast because there's a lot of stuff happening. And that's... 3D bits from Colin who says, so wait, does South Carolina have forests? I had no idea there were bears in that area of the U.S. Oh yeah, we- South They're quite so, forested. Oh yeah, South Carolina has a ton of forests. Mm -hmm. So, if your idea of South Carolina comes from me, then I'm a bad South Carolina ambassador because I live at the beach. And the beach is not as- but I mean, we- even here we do have forests. Well, it it's depends just not what as, part of the beach you're on for us. Like. There's an area by the Mall Players Choices Inn called mm -hmm. Briarcliff, and there's a part of the beach that was never developed right there. Yeah. Like, behind the Walmart, north of the Walmart. Mm hmm And it looks like a jungle. Like, real tall trees, vines everywhere. It is really forested. 
And yeah. I imagine that's how the rest of the beach would have looked if they never built all the houses and hotels. Yeah, there's parts. There's there's parts of. Um, I, so, that's the thing. It's like they, you got to tear down the forest to build up the buildings, and we've got a lot of the buildings because this is a tourist area, and we've got to put the buildings. But in the places where there is forest, we got bears. You know, we got stuff that lives in there. Um, also, we have closer all to all the venomous snakes yeah. and the junk. river, the Waccamaw. Mm -hmm. It's really, there's a lot of trees around that too, but you also can't build because it's swampland. So the trees come down with their big roots and it looks not as big as the Everglades, but it's like a mini Everglades along the river because it's so swampy. Yeah. But yeah, we, um, we have bears even here, but like if you leave the beach part of South Carolina and you start heading into the other parts of South Carolina, South Carolina like, it has a lot of forests. A lot of forests, a lot of a lot of wildlife. Um, and if you get up like in cougars, we got cougars. Greenville, Spartanburg, like the northwest side, it gets mountainous because it's almost into the Appalachian Mountains. Yep. Three hundred bits from Dan who says Jacksonville is overwhelmed with jumbo shrimp. It's the best I can do. <laughs> I would love that. Overnight, every every city's mascots came to life. Renee says, "Cougars, the animal or the lady?" Both. Any bits from Gold Mage? Dan said both. Uh, who says, so grandkids, let me tell you uh, that story of how my wife collided with the Thomas the Great and Terrible. He broke through the door with a wasp the size of my camera and ate all my food. Yes, this is all 100% accurate. <laughs> I remember that. I remember um, that happening. I won't forget the time that Thomas broke into my house. He I, broke the door. He he broke the door. He Kool Aid he Kool Aid man through the door, and I was like, Thomas, just open the door. I remember all of that. Clearing a bit some Satsy who just writes, beans. <laughs> Timed well with my laugh. Hundred bits from Adris Ten. Thirty bits of Platinum Pikachu says, Rip lemonade. Fizzy drinks don't really agree with me, but I'll happily have some still lemonade. Either way, it's been nice having Pikachu-colored text as an option. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, um, you know, we'll have other, there'll be other drinks. Your dad says that someone he knows would go out hunting near here, mm -hmm. and you couldn't be in the woods longer than 20 to 30 minutes and not see a bear. Like, within yeah. that time span, you'd see it. Yeah. Yeah, we got bears. I never ran into a bear here on my own. Yeah. Like, I, I, well, I also... When you were a kid and played in the woods. Yeah, when I was a kid, I played in the woods all the time. Um, it's just what I did. Yeah, I wouldn't do that here. Well, when you grow up, we, and I've told this story a million times before, yeah. but like we had, as part of your education when you're a kid, they yeah. teach you about all the venomous snakes. Yeah. You know, they teach you how to know which snakes will kill you and what to do. I mean, it was in the same same thing in Wisconsin, but we didn't have that much. Like, it was be like, oh, leaves of three, let it be Yeah. for poison ivy. They teach you, they don't really teach you much about alligators. They just teach you, if you see an alligator, do not get near it. <laughs> and also, they are much faster than you think they are. And that's about it. Got one it. of the coolest things about our area, and I know I've said this before, is this is one of the only places in the world where Venus flytraps grow naturally, and they're endangered, but, like, if you look up the map of, like, the range of them, it's only our area. Like, our county, and then yeah. whatever the county is north of us. I ain't never seen a Venus flytrap in the wild. Well, it's because we don't go where they are. Oh. They're in the um, Carolina Bays. You know the bays? Yeah. Yeah. Linda says, do you have scary bears or nice friendly black bears? We have black bears. If we have other types of bears, I don't know about them. But I also ain't never seen no bear. Hey, welcome. Hi 
Teletubbies. You get tired of the sun? Come here. Come here. Hi, buddies. We're talking about we're talking about um, bears. Shay says I've also heard that Venus flytrap enthusiasts keep growing locations a secret because of the endangered thing. They do, and there's a few state parks that have. Hi, Cappy. Their locations as part of it, and the rangers will tell you where some of them are, but not all of them because of that reason. You made it. Hi, buddy. Hi, pal. Welcome. Hi. You lay down now? You get comfy? Hi, sweetheart. He good boy. You want to sit? You want to sit over there? You want to sit over here? You get to decide. Hi, sweetie. Good boy. You, you laid right always okay. a good boy. All right. And he says, I've never seen a tick and I would like to keep it that way. Ooh, I'm sorry. Be careful in the woods up there. Yeah, that... That'll change. <laughs> if you're going outside, it's probably going to change. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. It, for a lot of for a lot of this, you know, saying like, "Oh, South Carolina is dangerous," got all these critics. I mean, a lot of it is: Are you going to be spending time in the woods? If you're not going to be spending time in the woods, you're not going to see any of this stuff. Yeah. You're just not like the over under of you running into a snake at all is super low, and then a venomous snake is even you know even lower. You know, chances are even lower. So like, we see on average how many snakes a year just walking. One? One or two. One or two snakes a year? One was a decays brown snake and the other was a copperhead. Yeah. So like just just going for just going for walks like a few times a week, you it only like one or two snakes in a year. Kid Chef <laughs> says, what about the ocean? Oh there's a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Yeah, don't go in the ocean. Um, and if you do, don't learn about what's in there. <laughs> Shuffle your feet when you walk in the sand. Ocean is scary, man. I, I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not an ocean advocate at all. <laughs> Chess. The, the ocean. ocean. It's, a, it's whole. a whole other thing. Yeah, I don't. Mm. The thing about the ocean. Is that you can't see in it, and I'm I'm not about that life. Yeah, not at all, not at all. You start wandering around in there, and then something rubs up against your leg, and you're not sure exactly what it was, and then your brain starts going, and you're like, or you feel a burning sensation in your leg and wonder if something bit you or if you got stung, and you don't know by what, so you have to get out of the water and check if you're bleeding or. <laughs> You have a sting. Yeah. And like, it's fine. It's fine. I just... If you're someone who gets easily creeped out by the idea of like, something touched me and I didn't see it and I don't know what it was and it felt strange, uh, the ocean may not be for you. Because <laughs> that is... that That is a thing that will occur. So, you know, just... Keep it in mind. Uh, let's see. Uh, three to bits from Adrian, who says, uh, "Fun fact: A misspelled text of Stay Clam was given as advice for a contestant on Jeopardy, and it turned out to be good advice. If you don't know, don't guess. Stay. What's was what it? Stay calm and keep on. Stay mm -hmm. clam and. I can't finish that up. Seven months from Little Ashlina." Uh, 22 months at Tier 2 Gold Toast from Grabobly. Speaking of the ocean, I learned recently we get manatees this far north. Tom reminded me because oh, yeah. his dog is named Manatee. All right, Dan said the ocean is like a public pool if your neighbors were psychopaths. <laughs> I'm just imagining getting into, going, going to a pool. And there's just stuff swimming around in it and being like, what happened? We're like, yeah, we put some we put some critters in there just to liven up the experience. <laughs> just to make it a little more interesting for everyone. 
Is that the shark? Yeah, but it's a little one. And if you're not bleeding, he'll leave you alone. 3D Bits from Platinum Pikachu says, Also, it was very hard to tell, but during the drinks war, for a split second, tea and coffee were tied on 69.69. Quadruple nice. Oh, I hope someone got a screenshot of that. It's nice to know that that moment is where things lined up. That's exciting. Yeah, little sharks are not a threat. Big sharks aren't even... Sharks. Big sharks are a threat to people. Big sharks aren't even really a threat to people. I mean, like, obviously if you see a shark, your your brain is going to always be like, that's bad. But, like, it's not inherently bad. Yeah. Um, you know, we, uh... And, and like, they have, uh, they have flags and stuff that the lifeguards put up that they're like, please, you know... Marine warnings. Yeah. Um... And sharks are seen off of the pier all the time. It's because people throw bait. Yeah, so like you, you, that, that's that's one piece of advice I will give you. If you if you go to Myrtle Beach or any beach place, um, don't swim near the pier. I don't know why you would. I don't know why anyone would be like, I'm gonna swim under that pier. Like, if you think about it for more than like one second, you won't do it. Please don't do that. Throw you against the pilings. That's that's one reason. Um, it's disgusting. Oh yeah. It's absolutely disgusting over there. Don't do that. Um, and then uh, also that is where the sharks generally go because there's um, there's food there. So uh, yeah. Cool. There's some other way. Someone asked about Kepi's favorite treats. He really likes the... Meat tubes. They're uh, churu, inari churu. Is it inari? Anaba, I thought it was anaba. Anaba, anaba churu. I-N-A-B-A. And the other thing that he's been eating and really liking is... Freeze-dried chicken? They're freeze-dried chicken, but it's like just the one ingredient. It's like only chicken and it's freeze-dried. Yeah. It has a red thing on the outside. It's like... Red logo. Red logo. <laughs> they named it well then. Mario Griff says, you'd be great for a Myrtle Beach tourist company. I'm sure Myrtle Beach would love me to be like, don't come here, don't get in the water, it's scary, just don't stay go home. In the, don't go in the woods. Don't go in the woods, don't do the, like I, I, I have thought about doing a, a when I was in high school I did a little tiny mini series of like recommendations but it was done at like a high school level and it probably shows and I'd love to redo that at some point and be like you know here are my restaurant recommendations here are my attraction recommendations because I I know the area pretty well like I have I have a lot of things I could talk about and recommend because John says go see Roland that would be on there. That would be on there. Um, maybe at some point I'll get around to actually doing it. Or maybe I'll just talk about it for the rest of my life. There's other people doing Myrtle Beach tourism videos on YouTube. Yeah, but they're not me. That's true. They're not me. And like... The, a lot of the people that are doing those sorts of things and do those sorts of things, they're not from the area. They yeah. just... They've lived, you know, they move here and they've, uh, they've lived here for a short amount of time and they're like, let me tell you about the stuff. And I'm like, I'm a local. <laughs> there are not very many of us that live here, but I am, I was born here. And I can tell you things about this area. God, someone the other day was like, confused that you were like born and raised here. I don't remember who it was. They were convinced that we didn't exist at all. Yeah. I was like, that's not real. It's like, there's hospitals here. Babies are born here. What, the, what do you mean that's not real? That's only people only move to Myrtle Beach. People aren't born there. I'm like, incorrect. <laughs> what? What does that even mean? There's like 49 schools in the school district here. Satsy says, everyone who lives here is old or fictional. 
We do have a lot of old people, but that's because that's because so many folks retire in Myrtle Beach. So instead of Florida. <laughs> yeah. There there's the, the Myrtle Beach consists of two big groups and mm -hmm. one is you know, folks retiring because they want to play golf. If you want to play golf, you retire in Myrtle Beach. If you don't want to play golf, I guess you retire in Florida. Um, and then we have a lot of families. We have a lot of people that move here and, and start um, families. It's, pretty, it's a pretty good family town, I would say. Rob retired to places so many deadly critters. Well, I mean, if you're not, if again, if you're, if you're not walking through the woods, you'll probably be okay. That being said, actually, ironically, if you're playing golf, you'll actually see more gators than anyone else. Oh, yeah. Because gators, like, they live on the golf courses. But they're usually not on the golf course itself. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they wander up onto, like, the fairway and they're like, I'm going to sleep here. And if that happens, you either play around them or you call the clubhouse. And you're like, there's a gator on the fairway. And they're like, oh, we're sorry. We'll come take care of that. And then they... Bring some people out, and they shoo the gator back into the pond. They're like, Gator, this is where... They just take a broom and shoo it in. Yeah, they're like, Gator, no, this I is where... No, I think they leave him alone. I think you just have to, like, skip that hole. I think they I think they move him. I believe they move him. Austin could answer that. Austin's yeah. played a lot of golf. You can shoot. You can shoo a gator. No. You can shoot a you can you can shoo a gator. You just need a long stick. <laughs> Line rider, I did too. <laughs> yeah. You're not supposed to shoot them. Yeah, Chaz here to remind everyone, Stephen Corp does not recommend shooting a gator. Yeah, you remember, gators are really quick. Yeah, they're if fast. If you are within there was something they taught us at school, and I don't remember what it was. It was like, if you're within 30 feet of a gator, you're within striking distance. It's some crazy number. Yeah. Because you think 30 feet, you're like, 30 feet so far away. It's like, no, a gator, a gator who decides he wants to bite you can get to you faster than you're going to be able to get out of there. Because they are really quick. Their legs are only like this long. You can fact check me on this. But they can move them really quick. So that's that's the thing. Three bits from Will Peters who says, uh, we can't take to the beach. Uh, we can't take to the beach, but we can uh, make you comfortable around uh, strange creatures on the beach. Uh, we can take you golfing. We can't make you like golfing. I mean, you're safer golfing than at the beach. Probably? Probably. But again, I, I, I don't find gators scary. I find snakes way scarier than gators. Because they camouflage a lot? Gator ain't, ain't, gator, there ain't no gators sneaking up on nobody. You see the gator, you know? Like you're gonna be in a place where the gator is and you're gonna know about it because the gator big, that, that's not scary. Scary thing is you're walking through the woods and you're suddenly you're like, something bit my ankle. And you look down and it's a copperhead and you're like, oh God, I now have started a clock to death. That's way scarier to me. I mean, like everyone's allowed to be scared of like whatever they want, but like that, mm, that's scarier to me. That is much scarier to me because you can't see snakes when you're walking through the woods. You try. You look at your feet and you're looking where you're going and you're trying. But if if one if you step on one, if you do something and they and they get you, it's immediately like, okay, I've been bitten by a snake. Which snake is it? Okay, the snake is venomous. Shoot. I need to uh, call for an ambulance. I need to uh, remain calm because if you get yourself hyped up, the uh, venom works through your bloodstream faster and kills you more quickly. So you're like, I just need to stay chill. And just understand that I'm dying slowly, <laughs> and I need to call the ambulance and walk out of the woods. <sighs> yeah. Chess said, "The safest place is in front of the TV, in front of your Wii collection." It's pretty. It's pretty safe here. I've never seen a snake in the house. 
Never seen a snake in the house. I mean, I've had, I've known people that have got snakes in the house, but we've never had a snake in the no. house. So. Doing good so far. Jared says, no venomous spiders. I mean, we got widows. <laughs> We got widows in the garage, <laughs> like multiple widows in the garage, but I've never seen them in the house. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, Matt did not like that. We got 18 months from Toon Linky and three and a bit from Will Peters, uh, who says, oh wait, I read this. I just didn't clear it. I read it. I was like, time to read it a second time. And he says, widows are uh, not actually that dangerous to adults. They're mostly dangerous to kids. Yep, kids and pets. Our widows are brown widows. And the elderly. Yes. The elderly. I didn't know they there was brown widows until we saw them. And they're even less dangerous. Brown widows eat black widows, and they're not as bad. So I'm not happy about them at all. Yeah, we have <laughs> both black widows and brown recluses. And, like, it's fine. It's fine. Again, I don't know. Insects? I don't. Me and insects are cool. I, I don't. I don't have a big thing with insects. I there. There's certain things I don't want in the house. You know. If, everything. If, yeah, generally, generally <laughs> everything. Kepler's allowed in the house, and that's it. Um, yeah, I don't like to find spiders in the house. I get rid of the spiders in the house. Um, one of my friends, uh, uh, Steve Campos is friend to all. I mean, he he really is just if he if he finds a spider in the house or whatever like he catches it and releases it. Um, he knows so much about Which is extremely noble. The flora and fauna of southern Arizona too. But there's more than I'm willing yeah. to do. I if I find a spider in the house, I go um, but yeah, the other st if it's outside, that's fine. I really don't mind I really don't mind it living outside. Mal doesn't like black widows. Mal doesn't like. I don't the black... like spiders. Mal Mal doesn't like the black widows living outside. It's fine. We have three into bits from uh, Will Peters who says there was a Saturday Night Live sketch in 2019 when Adam Sandler hosted, where he played a tour guide advertising Italy tours, but made it painfully clear that even if you go on the tour, you uh, you're still your miserable self there as you are at home. I remember that. I remember that. I mean, now that you mention it. Vaguely. Vaguely. Somewhat related. I'd like to go to Italy at some point. Yeah, me too. Maybe not like tomorrow. Yeah. I got something tomorrow. going on tomorrow. I'm playing it takes two. Tomorrow night at uh, what time do we stream? I'm actually asking. I don't know. Eight. Is it? Is it? Eight. eight. Thanks, Chess. <laughs> Tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, we are playing It Takes Two. It's the follow-up game uh, from Haze Light's uh, first game, A Way Out, which we just finished playing. A Way Out was rated M, so you had to put the kids to bed. It Takes Two is not rated M. So you could let the kids stay up. Of course, we might sing a song about buttholes or something. So, you know, your mileage may vary. But uh, tomorrow night, we'll be playing It Takes Two. And I've heard really, really good things about it. It's It scored really well. A Way Out was good. But apparently It Takes Two is, like, really, really good. And as Chess says, it's a very different game. So, um... Yeah. Yeah. No says anything is possible without a family friendly tag. <laughs> it's true. Other things to announce. Um, if you haven't already seen the Pokemon Unite video, we have a uh, Pokemon Unite video out. It features so many folks. Dan, Tom, Emil, Josh, you, me, Chaz, Chaz, Paul, Paul, Emmy, Emmy. Austin. Austin? 
there was like 12 of us, 13 of us there that night we recorded, so we did some with those people, and then we rotated people out. Brandon's got a link for you if you haven't, uh... Another one's coming out. seen it. There's gonna be another one tomorrow. We're bumping First 20 back. So you're gonna get... And actually, this is really exciting. The Pokemon Unite video that came out is a teaser for Pokemon Unite Weekend. So hold on to your butts, because you're getting a Pokemon Unite video on Friday, on Saturday, and on Sunday. How about that? So there will be there will be four out by the end of this weekend. So um, if you're if you're into that, or if you would like to get into it, if you're like I want to watch people play it so I can maybe start liking it, then it's there. The the great thing is, um, yeah. First off, thanks to Dan. I want yeah, I want I want a round of applause in Dan chat for Dan. Dan so hard. Round of applause of uh, in in chat for Dan because. Dan got that sucker out on Monday? Yeah. Was it Monday? I thought it came out Tuesday. Maybe it was Tuesday. I don't remember. It was fast. Because we recorded it Saturday night, and we're like, Dan, if... Like, we, we told Dan, we're like... We'd really like to release one. We, we said, the as soon as you get it done... Oh, it was Monday. It was Monday. It's even faster. Yeah. As soon as you get it done, we'll release it. And he got it done, and we released it Monday. So, yeah, um... Yeah, it was incredible. So we that was the teaser for this weekend of Pokemon Unite. So um, check it out. They're good videos, too. They're all 5v5. They're all folks you know. Um, and we had multiple... We had six different people recording. Yeah. So we could get a bunch of different, you know, angles of one, yeah. one of the teams. Because we're not all together on a team. We're... And the nice thing is all like the matches the matches are 10 minutes, you know, and that's that's actually one of my favorite things about Pokemon Unite We were talking um, uh, We were talking last night because we played a little bit with some well, I played a little bit with friends and uh, We were talking about how the fact that the matches are only 10 minutes are one of the reasons that we're playing it if it was like League if it was like oh these are 30 minutes. These are 45 minutes um I just, I, I don't think we would play it. Chess said, everyone gets the chance to be both with and against Steven, or the camera. Yeah, yes. Steven was the main camera, so he is always going to be in a video, but everyone else is going to rotate through, so... Yeah. Like, in the first video, you didn't hear... Like, in the first video, Austin's on my team. Yeah. Um, and Emil is on my team. Yeah. Uh, but in the next video, like Austin, I'm fighting against Austin or yeah. something. I think Emil's still on my team in the second video, but there's an upcoming video where where we fight against him. So like we keep changing the teams around, so it keeps it interesting, and also keeps changing the scores up because like we're altering the the thing. There's also one where Haley and Thomas got to play on the same team. That was really a, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. Um, it's fine. It's fine. So, um, look forward to that, because they're relatively short, they're fun, it's good stuff. Uh, and I've been playing it, and I'm trying to get into Expert. I'm on Great Class 4 right now, so I'm almost Expert. I'm on Great Class 2. Get good. Jacebook says, is Disc Only still on for next week? Should be. Should be. As a general rule, I'm always around to do it. Um, sometimes other folks have things going on, and then hopefully they tell me. Sometimes I learn from my chat, and I'm like, that's not how I should learn these things. <laughs> but yeah, it's as far as I know, it's still on. So, Emmy says, I got expert briefly, but then I lost it playing ranked with friends last night. Well, the good news is, if you hit it, you get the reward for it. So, like, at the end of a season, which is just a few weeks... It takes whatever your whatever, highest at? Whatever your highest Good. rank at any given time was, you get the reward for that tier. So, like, if you made it to Expert, but then you fell back down to Great, doesn't matter. As long as you hit Expert at all, you get the Expert level... Reward. Reward stuff. So, I'm so close, I'm like, I want to at least hit Expert so I, I can be too. like, okay but I gotta finish my painting in the video. Yeah. 
Ace Rocks uh, Racer says, just trying to expert solo is hard. I would almost argue that it's easier solo. And the only reason I say that is because we've been doing, like, team stuff, where we take a group of five and go into a battle. And when you do that, my, my belief very firmly is that it is matchmaking you against other teams. And when you matchmake solo, you can be put against people that... I hate to say are bad, but are bad, and then you <laughs> can do really well. <laughs> but when you match make as a team, and you you uh, you get matched up against other teams, and some of those teams are extremely good. They've clearly been playing other mobas, and they got everything down to a science, and they um, destroy you. Renee says you can beat up children. Is what Steven says. I'm, you can beat up children. You can beat up children. Yeah, you, you're 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 beating up on you're beating up on kids. But I've had some good matches. I've had some... There's been some really close stuff. There's been some really good stuff. Last night I had a match where the match was really close. Like, it was really close. And I was like, oh man, this is this is really tight. Like, we're... You go know, back and forth. It's, it's going to be pretty even. And then I realized we only had four people. And it was still even? Wow. There was some guy who had been sitting at the base since the very beginning. And I went, oh my god, we've been playing 4v5, and it's been, it's been close. But then I was super mad at that guy. I don't even know that guy. But I was super mad, because when the game started, you know how everyone has to hit ready? Yeah. Well. They took, had to have hit ready. It took him a long time to hit ready. And then in the last second, he hit ready. And then, you know, it takes 45 seconds to pick your character, he never picked a character. And I sat there watching that, and I knew I knew we were in I knew we were in trouble when they didn't pick a character, and then it went to the next screen, and it had to just pick him a random character. I was like, I was like, this is bad. And then of course, once we get started, he didn't move the whole match. See, I had someone who I reported him. I had someone who was there some of the times, but then I just see them sitting at base for a long, long time, and then they'd go out again die, and then they'd go sit at base for, like, yeah, way too long. <sighs> Alright, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get a drink. Yeah, that's kind of how it felt, like, oh, let me quick text someone, I'm gonna sit in the... Anyway, we lost that match <laughs> because, um, if it's, I mean, if it's close and the other team gets Zapdos, it's it's over. It's over, and they got Zapdos, and it was over. So anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Pokemon Unite's out. You should watch that. Um, there's more coming out this weekend. There's, yeah, more Pokemon Unite coming out this weekend. Today is Super Mario Galaxy Day, so... Um, you got any vlogs coming out? <laughs> you're, you're asking a leading question on purpose. I know. Do you guys like 2018 vlogs? I, maybe just a little bit? You like to uh, see them? Just a little bit? Because... There is a new one... Every day... For three days... Starting on... Friday? Saturday? Friday or Saturday? I don't remember. There's three in a row. You're going to get a new 2018 vlog every day for three days. It's been very exhausting, but I have three done. With any hope, I'll get the fourth one done, but I'm, 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 I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's, um, yeah. Marty says, how many have left? So, uh, I finished up through April 15th, so I have a month and a half left because it, ends at the end of May, but I've only got a few more days, uh, like nine days, nine days in the trip, and the, the East Coast road trip is just hard, Yeah. so I'm really looking forward to finishing that up, because things will probably move a little, bo little bit more quickly after that. Um, and then Coliseum, Coliseum 1. Yeah, but that's and like then there's three like, days or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's and then easy. there's a little bit of time, and then they're all done. Yeah. So. <sighs> yeah. Good job. They're good. I hope you like video game stores because 
these three vlogs are almost entirely video game stores. Like, there's a day we go to six, and then the next day we go to, like, ten. It's just... We really... We almost see every video game store on the East Coast. I mean, it's just like... We... We, uh, I remember we buy Extra a Life. lot of GameCube games. Extra Life that year, people were like, how did you get all these GameCube games? This is when we got a bunch of them. Yeah. Like, we had, we had, in the first few days after leaving PAX, like, we have to buy a box because we've already bought over 100 GameCube games and we're trying to store them. And I'm, I'm starting to do the math of, like, okay, so now we can hold this many. Bought a lot of games. My heart goes out to anyone that's attempting to complete GameCube now, because uh, the prices have increased by a lot. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Not now. I would not. Three to four bits from Picklotron with the Jepson. Woo! I'm gonna say woo. It's a it's a you, but it's it's you're making the this good for the 2018 vlogs. Picatron, thank you. And with that, that's it. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Join us for it takes two. Looking Farewell, lemonade. And uh, say goodbye to lemonade. And if you want to pick up a lemonade mug, today is your uh, today is your last day. We'll be taking it out uh, of the store tomorrow. So, Tom says I'm, I'm two games away from N64, so I'm setting my sights on GameCube next. I mean, as long as you don't have a, like a so one of the things that's made game collecting a little more difficult for us is that we're like trying to do it. We're trying to do things like buy Extra Life. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we've got several hundred games to get by this arbitrary date. Well, not arbitrary date, but, you know, the specific date. If you're just collecting games, I guess it'd be easier because then you you don't have to, like, get them for a certain thing. You know, the deadline makes it more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, if you're willing to, you know, look at a game and be like, that game is crazy, the market is insane, and just pass it over because you're like, I'll pick it up in three years, then, yeah, it'd probably yeah. be easier if you, to do. If you can go to flea markets on weekends and whenever... Yeah, there's some games now that I don't think I would buy unless I could find them. Tom says, I have some of the more cheap. expensive ones, but Pokemon Box is going to suck. Yeah. Yeah, we, um... So I've actually almost finished GameCube. Like, finished, finished GameCube. Like, complete. I've been working at it. And we're down to where we need... I think we need a black label copy of F-Zero... And then we need the manuals for Pokemon Box, Evolution Snowboarding, and Disney Basketball. And I think that's it. Yep. Sounds right. Like that and then and then at that point, we literally have everything for GameCube done for real done. Scyther Time says you need the GameCube controller adapter for Odama. That might be sitting in my living room. <laughs> <coughs> might be sitting in the living room right now. Um, the Wii collection looks long. Yeah. Well, that I was just talking for GameCube. On the Wii, we're missing 11 games? I thought it was... Yeah, it's 11. I think 11. I think Why 11. is Box so expensive? Uh, Pokemon Box. Pokemon Box. Pokemon Box is expensive because it was only sold the in the U.S. It was only sold in the Nintendo World Store in New York. You may have been able to order it online also. Yeah. Through Nintendo's website, but that's the only place it was sold. That rarity, combined with the fact that recently Pokemon exploded in ways that still make me shake with anger, means that Pokemon Box Complete is now going for well over. Like twelve hundred dollars. Um, it's stupid. Yeah. 
people are pointing out, it's not even a game, it's just storage. Yeah. And like, if you, if you're not collecting games, and you want the storage for, for playing the games, you can buy like the Japanese version. Yeah. The Japanese version's like 20 bucks, or whatever. <laughs> so... Yeah. Why are the Pokemon games expensive? There was very recently, it's it's a lot of factors, and I'll hit on this and then we'll, we'll close for today. There's a lot of factors that have contributed to it. But it's mostly, it's mostly hype. There's not anything intrinsically giving everything sudden value. Um, there, it's not scarcity. Like, the Pokemon games are not rare. They're, you can buy them. They're out there. You can purchase them. But, with the retro market already the way it was, which has been very, very high, and then with the advent of a lot of um, very big YouTubers and, and internet people suddenly putting value into, I mean, it really kind of started with Pokemon cards. Um, Lo yeah, Logan Paul is one. Like, suddenly bringing the light back to this nostalgic thing that a lot of people remember has caused everything to explode. It's like a perfect storm, basically. There's all these different things, and it's it exploded perfectly to make everything spike to levels that don't even make sense. And we're starting to see it fall a little bit, um, because it, it wasn't sustainable. So fortunately, it's starting to fall just a little bit. There's some prices that are starting to... They're not back to the way they should be, but they're not where they were, like, a few months ago. But yeah, it's, uh... It's gross. Collecting video games is bad. Just as a concept. But, um... As of late, as of the last year, it's, it's started to become... Inaccessible for almost everyone. Um... And not worth it for basically everyone. <laughs> Brandon says, pay no attention to the wall behind this man. Yeah, we is about the last system, man. We is about the last system that you can call, you can buy games that aren't at stupid prices. Yeah. GameCube, stupid prices. We is still accessible. Um, and Wii U obviously is still accessible, but like. I don't want to collect PS2. Anyway, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, oh, speaking of, Metal Rock Ninja hits 13 and said, uh, you and Mal are the main reason I got into video game collecting, and I hope someday I can get the space to make an awesome game room like yours. You guys are awesome. Well, my advice to you, Metal Rock Ninja, is to take your time and to pick up, uh, pick up games when it makes sense to pick them up. That's, if you can go to flea markets, garage if you can sales. go to garage sales, and if you can be, to some extent, ahead of the curve. Like, we were ahead of the curve on N64, we were ahead of the curve on GameCube, and we're currently ahead of the curve on Wii. Like, and I've said this before, Wii U is a great system to collect. Tom finished Wii U, uh, and... You know, the best the best game collecting is to collect the games that actually mean something to you. Yeah. Um, but if you're like, but if you want to finish a library, if if that's your thing, if you're like, I want to do a library, I'm still recommending Wii U. Devil's Third is the only one in that now that I'm like, I'm really pissed that the retro market has done what it what it has because Devil's Third is up to like over three hundred dollars and it shouldn't be. But um, yeah. Anyway, all right, are we done? We're done. We're done. Have a great Thursday. We'll chat with you all tomorrow night, 8 p.m. It takes two. Have a good day. Speaking of getting startled, Kepi just got a little startled. What? I leaned forward. You're okay. Keep resting, buddy. Who's that Pokemon? It's Kadabra pretending to be Pikachu.